All right, welcome to another video with Six Patterns. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today I thought we'd look at a case that we haven't seen so far in the series. Okay. So, what do you think, Kevin, from low power here on this picture? Well, I think we have a surgical wedge biopsy, and it looks mighty pink to me, as we like to say in the business. And when we see pink, what do we think about Max? Usually, either one of two things. It's either acute lung injury, or it's advanced fibrosis. Right. So, which one is more important? Well, I'd say acute lung injury would be more important because that's what's going to kill the patient in the next few days. Right. So, if you pay attention to those numbers, one and two, that's acute injury one, fibrosis two, there's a reason they're in that order. So, w the only way we can distinguish immediately whether this is a acute injury problem or a fibrosis problem is to get up close enough to see what's making the biopsy pink. That's right. Although we could say, you know, kind of like when you're looking at a liver biopsy from low power, you see the nodules of cirrhosis. Same thing here. We don't see a lot of advanced fibrosis from low power. And usually, in the case of UIP, usually, usually interstitial pneumonia, good one, Max. You'll see some fibrosis right. from low power. And they look sort of like pink islands, which is why the scars themselves stand out at low mag. Here, we don't really get a sense of that. There are a few pink areas, but I think those are probably blood vessels, uh, arteries surrounded by fibrin. Exactly. So, like you said, we have to go to higher power and see exactly what is making this biopsy pink. So we can do that. Look at that. So we zoom in and the air spaces, the alveolar spaces are filled with material. It looks, it looks weak and wet and it looks like edema. Yeah. Not much fibrin in there, but there's fibrin congealed in little places, kind of making things looking like a membrane. It looks a lot like a hyaline membrane. It's plastered up against the alveolar walls. Pink, fibrinous material against the alveolar walls. A classic appearance of a hyaline membrane. Right. And these look pretty, pretty young, early in their development. Very early. And they only last about two or three days, you know, until they start to organize. So this is a pretty early diffuse alveolar damage. Perfect. DAD. We're done. That's it. We made our diagnosis. Except the, the clinician's going to ask, yeah, but what caused it? Exactly. Because the clinician already knew, right? Diffuse alveolar damage, the patient is sick, they're in the ICU, diffuse they're on a the ventilator. Yep. The clinician wants to know what is causing this diffuse acute lung injury that's creating all this problem. So I came up with a little mnemonic to help Excellent. us remember what exactly it is that we need to search for when we have an acute lung injury biopsy. And the mnemonic goes, C. Deb Fish. Now this mnemonic That's... doesn't work for a lot of people. They say, what are you talking about? So you have to know the background. Right. C as in, uh, you see Deb fishing, right? right? But it's the letter C. Got it. Okay, C. Got Deb it. Fish. Think of somebody you know named Deb, she's out fishing, C. Right. Deb Fish. Okay. So what does it stand for? Well, the C must mean something. The C, is for connect, features of connective tissue disease. Okay, so diffuse lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate. Okay. Pleuritis, lymphoid follicles. Nothing in this biopsy that we have that looks no. like that. How about the D? Features of drug reaction. Foaminess to the cytoplasm of macrophages and type 2 pneumocytes. E? Eosinophils. Eosinophils of acute eosinophilic pneumonia, something that the clinicians will be particularly interested in because of its acute steroid responsiveness. Okay, B, blood, right? Because diffuse alveolar hemorrhage syndromes always have acute lung injury associated with them. It's something people don't really think about. They think about hemorrhage, they think about hemosiderin, they think about red blood cells, but they don't think about the acute lung injury component. Right. Okay, F, foreign material. There's a variety of different foreign material that you could look for. Aspiration, right. injected foreign material, material in the arteries, arterioles, etc any type of foreign material. I, infection. Yeah, I would have said that I see dead fish. <laughs> that would be a yeah. better way because I is a real critical one in there. I would be the most important one, right? Because for the clinicians, really the main question is, is it infection or is it one of all of those other things right. that could be causing acute lung injury? Because if it's infection, they will stay away from immune suppression and they will treat the infection. Any of the other things, probably steroids, immune suppression, immune modulation. So the pathologist says, okay, well, that's fine, but what do I look for for infection? 
granulomas, viral cytopathic effect, necrosis, necrosis, and abundant neutrophils. Right. And I'll tell you, in the immunocompetent setting, if you have a biopsy with acute lung injury, with none of those four things, infection goes from one of the top things on a differential diagnosis to one of the bottom things on the differential diagnosis. That and that important. is important to the clinician. Okay, where were we? Uh, so I, yeah. Fish, F-I-S. Advanced scarring suggestive of background chronic interstitial lung disease, and this might be an acute exacerbation. Right. So you've got acute then on top of chronic. An acute on chronic the process. F is fibrosis. And the H. H, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Whether we like it or not, some cases of hypersensitivity pneumonitis may show components of acute lung injury like fibrin, organization, that type of thing. And so you always have to think about HP. So look for the granulomas, look for the cellular interstitial infiltrates. Great. But there's something weird in this biopsy as you've been moving around. We keep running into these black dots. Is that some kind of artifact? I don't know. Let's look a little bit closer. Yes. And not corporamylacia. It's not corporamylacia. And I think the key for these little black or purple dots here is where they are. Wow, they're in the capillaries. They're in the terminal capillary unit within the interstitium, right? Yeah. So wow. the key to this, so first of all, we can recognize that this isn't supposed to be in the lung. Right. So we're kind of zeroing in on the F of C. dev fish, the foreign material. Right. And we're, we have to figure out what exactly this foreign material is. So the key to this actually lies in the patient's clinical history. A patient with a history of GI stromal tumor of the liver had a chemoembolization using yttrium-90 glass, uh, yttrium-90 impregnated glass beads about uh, three or four weeks prior to presentation. Wow, irradiation. Exactly. So normally they do a, a they check for a shunt, and this patient checked out no significant shunt, but. Something happened during the embolization process, and we basically showered the lungs with yttrium-90 impregnated uh, spheres, glass spheres. Bad outcome. Can you think of any better way to provide diffuse radiation pneumonitis than arterially? Maybe it's, inhaled. It's true. Maybe inhaled. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty significant. So... That's, I think, a good overview of acute injury and the approach to it. This is an unusual cause of acute injury, but one that you will never forget if you've watched this video. Very true. So I guess that sums up our, uh, our acute lung injury video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. Great. And one last thing. Always do special stains, at least an acid fast and a silver stain, if you see acute lung injury. Yeah, we didn't talk about that when we were talking about infection. And that is key. So... I, I made the comment that if you don't have those four things, infection goes low on the differential diagnosis, but it doesn't drop off the differential diagnosis. And you still need to do them because the clinician will think you're incompetent if they ask and you say you didn't do them. Very true. Very true. So AFB, GMS, multiple blocks. Right. Just spend the time to look at them. Great. It'll be fine. All right. See you next time. Yeah. Very good.